Good evening. Welcome to the evening services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, uh, August the 16th. If you looked at the bulletin this morning, you saw that the lesson will be entitled The Mountain of the Lord's Home. If you remember correctly, uh, last Sunday evening, I delivered a message to you uh, about Mount Zion. And so I'm kind of amplifying on that uh, this Sunday evening. We'll sing a few songs and have a couple of prayers, and hopefully I'll deliver a lesson to you that uh, will be worthwhile and see you through the night and challenge you to uh, meditate upon it and uh, perhaps even ask some questions. And so if you get your songbooks out and turn them first to number 508, 508, and we will sing this song together. 508, we will sing Verses 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, and 4. A uh, familiar old favorite. Are you ready? A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock Where rivers of pleasure I see He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock That shadows a dry, thirsty land He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand, and covers me there with his hand. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. He taketh my burden away. He holdeth me up, and I shall not be moved. He giveth me strength as my day. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand when clothed in his brightness transported i rise to meet him in clouds of the sky his perfect salvation his wonderful love I'll shout with the millions on high. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me hand and covers me there with his hand and if you would a lively song if you would turn to number 63 six three I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The Lord liveth, 
And blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I know the Lord liveth. And blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I know the Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord. Let's have a prayer together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for a time that uh, uh, we can just meet together uh, this Sunday evening, howbeit through the vehicle of YouTube. I pray that many will tune in and watch and hopefully will be uplifted. Uh, we hope you will be uplifted by the songs of praise that we sing to you. We sing them because you are worthy of that praise. We just uh, want to take this time, uh, however short it is, to worship you, uh, our true and living God. There are many on our prayer list, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, need to be brought to your attention. I pray that you would be with my brother-in-law, Phil. Uh, I pray that you would continue to be with Robin. I pray that you would continue to be with Linda Meredith's sister, Barbara. Uh, I pray that you continue to be with Elsie's brother, Matt. I pray that you would continue to be with Elizabeth as she needs to undergo a couple of more tests. And uh, just uh, have your loving hand upon them, dear Heavenly Father. And we learn from your Bible that the prayers of righteous people are powerful and effective. Be with us through the rest of this service. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Turn your uh, songbooks to number 457. We'll sing verses 1 and 3. 1 and 3. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent name. What more can he say than to you he has said, you who unto Jesus for refuge have fled? The soul that on Jesus had leaned for repose, I will not, I will not desert to his foes. That soul, though all hell, should endeavor to shake, I'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. And our last song before the lesson is number 715. 715. We will sing verses 1 and 3. 1 and 3 to number 715. The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ our Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. 
with his own blood he bought her and for her life he died mid toil and tribulation and tumult of her war she waits the consummation of peace forevermore till with the vision glorious her longing eyes are blessed and the great church victorious shall be the church at rest oh great job i hope you all got to sing along and uh, enjoyed the singing enjoyed the praising of the lord last week we did talk about mount zion and uh, how it kind of related to Jerusalem and how it related to the beginning of the church. This week, uh, the title of the lesson is The Mountain of the Lord's House. In Daniel, the second chapter, verses 34 and 35, uh, we find Nebuchadnezzar having a dream. And it says he saw a stone was cut out without hands, and it struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and crushed them. The stone that struck the statue became a great mountain. I want you to, let's focus on that term. It became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Now, if you remember the dream, the, the statue that Nebuchadnezzar saw represented four great kingdoms, starting with the Babylonian one, which Nebuchadnezzar was a member of, uh, they were superseded by the Medo-Persians, then the Greeks, and finally the Romans. The clay and the iron seems to have been the weakness of the Roman Empire, and it eventually, even though it lasted many, many years, it fell too. But Daniel explained the meaning in Daniel chapter 2, verses 44 and 45 with these words. In the days of those kings of God of, he of the God of heaven, who will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed, and that kingdom will not be left for another people. It will crush and put an end to all these kingdoms, but it will itself endure forever. Inasmuch as you saw that a stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it crushed the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, the gold, the great God has made known to the king what will take place in the future. So the dream is true, and its interpretation is trustworthy. The fact that the stone was cut without hands lets us know that that is not a physical kingdom, that we're talking about a spiritual kingdom here. It's one of divine origin. Now, uh, We've had lessons, even last week's lesson, that was kind of derived from, I guess, uh, physical mountains. Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2, 150 years earlier uh, than Daniel said, now, I will now it will come about that in the last days, get this, the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the chief of the mountains and will be raised above the hills and all the nations will stream to it. Now remember, it said as this beginning, and in the beginning it said in the last days. We know that in 30 uh, AD, these last days began. And so we've been in these last days since then. And both of these writers, Isaiah and Daniel, were talking about the establishment of the kingdom of God, the church, and they identify it as, get this, as mountain. Jesus came to establish the church, Matthew chapter 15, verses 13 to 19. 
and it was established in the city of Jerusalem. And the record of its establishment, all you have to do is turn to the book of Acts, especially the second chapter, and you will see the establishment of the church. Now, you know what? I live in southern New Jersey. <laughs> we are not exactly a mountainous section of the country. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I look at some of the little hills that I climb when I go bike riding out in the country, and I call them my little Pyrenees or my little Alps, when indeed they're about uh, 30 or 40 feet high. However, uh, Jane and I have traveled uh, around this country, and we've traveled around the world. We were in Switzerland seven or eight years ago and traveled through the Alps. And so... Um, we, we take a look and, and we see the great mountains. We've gone out west in this country and we've uh, driven through the Rocky Mountains. We even took that historic ride up Pikes Peak to the top of Pikes Peak. And so what is there about mountains? And I would like to make three statements this evening that uh, compare mountains to the church. First, and I hope you'll agree with me, even though I come from flat South New Jersey, mountains are majestically beautiful. I never tire of looking at the mountains. Jane and I uh, love to travel to Maine, and we love to travel north from here in the fall. And when we travel north in the fall, we try to get to what we call the climax of the changing of the leaves. And so as we make our way through uh, New York State and go north through uh, Connecticut and then into uh, New England and Massachusetts and New Hampshire and finally to Maine, we travel through the mountains and we see those wonderful colors. And they are a, a variety of colors. And we see a variety of trees. We see pines and spruce. We see deciduous hardwood trees. And I love, I love to see the various rock formations of the mountains. And uh, I love to, uh, if, if you know places where the water flows down the mountains and it flows over the rocks and forms waterfalls, we all love to see those waterfalls as the water rushes over the mountains. There's a, a beauty manifested in them. In the, in the song America, it, it talks about the purple mountain's majesty, how beautiful it is. And I would find it interesting that the shades of the colors of the trees as they're changing colors very much match the shades of the people that inhabit the earth. We have people of various skin colors in this country. We have people of various ethnic backgrounds. We have people of various economic status. And interestingly enough, in the church, they're all blended together. The people of different colors and races, ethnicities, uh, socioeconomic status are melted into one as believers in the Lord. And Paul emphasizes that in Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 to 28, where he writes, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek nor slave nor free man. There is neither female nor male. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And so first, there is the majestic beauty of the mountain compared to the majestic beauty of the church, which knows no other boundaries 
than that the the common denominator for everyone in the church is that they believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and they ought to be worshiping Jesus and God in a certain way. And so first, the church and the mountains are majestically beautiful. Let's look at the second aspect of this comparison between the mountains and the church. The mountains are firm and they cannot be shaken. Now I know I have I've never seen one, but when people ski on some of these mountains in the winter, uh, sometimes snow uh, starts to move from the upper levels of the mountain and moves to the lower level. It's called an avalanche. Every once in a while on mountains, uh, some rocks start to fall and we have rock slides. But here's what we know about real mountains. When you get below the snow, if it's winter, when you get below the, the loose rocks and even the dirt, you come to bedrock. You come to the, the foundation. And this foundation cannot be shaken. Oh, the, the edges of it, the top parts, the, those, those parts can be, can be moved. But the bedrock, uh, and you don't have to dig very, very far, the bedrock uh, cannot be shaken. Mighty winds might blow, trees might blow over, uh, but the mountain, the bedrock of the mountain stays the same. High winds can blow cars off the road, for goodness sake, but the mountain remains the same, right? The mountain remains the same because of the bedrock. And so when items are spoken of as being shaken in the Bible, we can go back to last week's lesson. Mount Sinai shook. The people were afraid. They, they, they would not touch the mountain. And, and it shook, and it was a sign that the law of Moses was going to fall. However, the church, according to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 18 to 29, is built on a foundation that cannot be shaken. The church is bedrock. When Jesus in Matthew chapter 16, verses 16 to 18, asked his disciples who he was, Peter said those remarkable, poignant words that, that we read all the time. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. I also say that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Now, the rock upon which uh, the church was built was not Peter. <laughs> it was the confession that Peter made. Even though Peter means rock, the Greek word for Peter means a small rock, the Greek word for rock upon which Jesus was going to build uh, his church was a different Greek word. This word meant bedrock, the very, very foundation. While Jane and I were at Harding uh, together, oftentimes we walked by the Bible building, and there was an inscription on the Bible building. Of course, when they, when they uh, built that, most people were using King James Bibles. There were, weren't any revised standards. There weren't uh, new King James. There was not an NIV. It was all King James. And Jane and I can always quote that. We kind of called it Bible building one, verse one. 
It said, no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. That was the foundation. The church is firm because it is built on the unchanging bedrock of Jesus Christ. Things change. Seasons change. People change. They get older. Gray comes into their hairs. Uh, you know, look at old pictures of yourself from 10, 15, 20 years ago, and you have this jet black hair or brown hair, not a trace of gray in there. We change. I remember when, as, as young, we, we thought we were almost indestructible. We did stupid things that we wouldn't think about doing today for a number of reasons. One, hopefully we're smarter, and two, because we physically can't do those things. We can't jump as high as we could. All things around us change, but Jesus does not change. No other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Our whole Christian life is based upon the confession that we make, much like what Peter said. We confess that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And so as we look at this comparison between the mountain and the church, we find first that the mountains are majestically beautiful, and two, that they cannot be shaken. I told you there would be three points, and this one is going to be quick. Third, both are massive. You know, we can drive through the Rocky Mountains, we can drive through the Alps, and they cover huge amounts of land mass. And you know what? The church was built, and it started at Jerusalem. Where is it today? There's not a corner of the earth today in 2020 that the message of Jesus Christ has not reached out to. The church is massive. Just like driving through the mountains, we see the, how massive they are. The church is massive. It, it goes into every small town. It goes into every state of the United States. It goes into every country in North America, South America. It goes into Europe and Asia and Africa. Christ's church is in hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of villages and towns. And granted, there may be places here in this country, if we just use our country as an example, where the church has not been firmly planted. The church is massive enough that if someone wants to attend the services of the Lord's church, now, used to be there was a, this big massive book that you looked in to find out where it was. Now you just have to use send your Google Google the Church of Christ, and you can find one near you. You can probably find one within minutes or certainly less than hours of you. Why? Because the church is massive. It's huge, and it was meant to be that way. Jesus meant it when he said to his disciples as he descended into heaven, go and preach the word to all the world, Matthew 28, to all the world. And it made the church massive. You know what? As we conclude the lesson, the mountain of the Lord's house is the most outstanding mountain mentioned in the Bible. Okay? You know, there's Mount Ararat where Noah's Ark supposedly uh, came to rest on. There is the Mount of Olives that is so uh, famous to us. There's the mount that Jerusalem, that elevated place that Jerusalem is on. 
but there is no mountain massive enough that compares to the mountain that is the church. And you know what? We can be part of that majestically built, beautiful mountain, the body of the Lord, his church. Because it's so massive that no matter where you live, you can be a member of the Lord's body. So this evening, we extend that invitation to you. If you've not become a Christian, we want to help you to do so. I can't do it through YouTube, but you can just call me or call any of our members, and we can help assist you in entering the Lord's body by being baptized into his holy name. I pray that uh, all of you in these trying times will stay healthy, that you will stay safe. Uh, let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this short amount of time that we've had. I pray that uh, you have accepted our praise and our prayers, that you have listened to those that we've petitioned for, that you have uh, listened to our uh, joyous voices talking about how, how great you are and how great your Son is. And I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, as we go to sleep tonight and we wake up tomorrow, a song will be on our lips and in our heart and thinking about how great you are and how wonderful it is to be a believer, how wonderful it is to be part of that mountain that is your wonderful, loving church. Be with us, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, we know that we sin. We pray for forgiveness. We pray that you would continue to be with us always. And we pray, as always, in your Son's most holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. May God bless you all. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah, from the heavens praise his name. Praise Jehovah in the highest, all his angels praise proclaim. Together praise Him, sun and moon and